How's it going everybody? My name is Adam and today I'm going to answer a question that I get a lot and that is what in the heck is Web3? You've likely heard that term before but never really thought that much about it. But the thing is it's really important that you understand that term and what it means for the future, especially if you're an investor. Because what email did to the post office or what cryptocurrencies will eventually do to the banks, Web3 is going to do to the current internet. I'm going to try and explain Web3 in a way that I understand things. And that is like a small child. But in all honesty, imagine trying to explain to somebody in 1995 what an iPhone is or what apps are. Now this is kind of the same concept because it's hard to imagine. But just understanding the goal, the overall goal of Web3 is the most important thing. Understanding kind of where we're heading and the direction that we're traveling is the most important thing. You don't actually have to understand or be able to imagine what it's going to look like. But to understand Web3, Let's quickly explain Web 1 and Web 2 because it will make much more sense and they are two things that you are already familiar with. Okay, Web 1 is your first internet. And if you're old enough to remember that dial-up noise, congrats, you are old. This was the internet from the 1990s to the early 2000s. The internet then was very one-dimensional. Buying something off the internet then was really shady. You want me to put my credit card information in there? Hell no. There was no sharing of information like we do today with videos and pictures. Instant Messenger was a big deal, remember that? And I still remember having my away messages and that noise you get when you got a message. Simpler times. Web 1 was more of a read-only type of internet with very little interaction. And we all remember, if you're old enough, how Mad Metallica got at Napster, and I think I personally got a virus from LimeWire. Web 2 comes along and changes the game. Web 2, we will estimate from mid-2000s to approximately now, even though we're in the middle of an evolution. This is when, during that time, we really got into smartphones and our digital appearances a lot more. I'm talking about social media with the Facebooks and the Snapper Chats and all the things. YouTube was founded in 2005. Shout out to YouTube. Think about that. That generated the ability to have someone become an actual content creator and have their own following like Mr. Beast, the Paul Brothers, and, and these guys. Oh, I'm an island boy. I, I'm a just island boy. And if you remember any of the things I was just talking about with the Web 1 days or those early Web 2 days, then make sure you give the video a like for the nostalgia alone and remember to subscribe. Now, let's fast forward a little bit in time closer to now. Web 3. Web 3 is evolving into being multidimensional and decentralized. For example of multidimensional, we're going to look at Facebook because that's probably just the easiest example for everyone to understand. Which, yes, Facebook is Web 2. But soon, we will be able to transport into the metaverse and interact with each other instead of just posting and reading. We will actually be able to talk to each other with our little avatars. Sorry, introverts. That will be Web 3, which is the next phase of the internet. We can buy and sell things in this new dimension while the transactions occur and are recorded on the blockchain, and which is another reason why cryptocurrencies and tokenization of things are going to be so important. Web 3 will be as transformative to society as Web 2 was compared to Web 1. The most unique thing about Web 3 is the decentralization of it all. No more need of massive companies to run Overwatch over the internet for us. We become the internet and we run it ourselves. And I know that sounds crazy. And it probably sounds as crazy as trying to explain what an app on an iPhone is to someone in 1995, like I mentioned earlier. Now, what will it look like exactly? No one can really tell you right now, at least not accurately, because we're still in the infancy stages. Just like we couldn't picture Instagram or TikTok whenever the evolution started from Web 1 to Web 2. But it's coming nonetheless. So just try understanding where we're heading instead of trying to picture it like, where am I going to post my vacay pics? Because it's going to be so much bigger than that. Per questbook.eth, Web 3.0 is an open, trustless, and permissionless network that enables a future where distributed users and machines are able to interact with data, value, and other counterparties via a substrate of peer-to-peer -peer networks without the need of third parties. That's huge. Those third parties being massive companies like Google that are constantly filtering what we see, which alters our views and opinions into what they want them to be. Imagine, instead of websites running on servers, we're the servers. The entire internet is running off of our electronics. We hold all the data, all the time, for all of it. That's the power of the blockchain and that's where Web3 is heading. 
That's why I get excited because I'm going to be an early investor in this thing. I remember David Letterman and other people laughing at Bill Gates whenever he was trying to explain what Web 1 was going to be. And everybody laughed at him. And now look, now imagine being an early investor at that time because that time then is this time now, except now we're looking at Web 3. Think about it like this. You can create and post stuff on Facebook, but at the end of the day, Mark Zuckerberg owns the platform. No more centralization, which obviously these sites manipulates our opinions with their algorithms that generates what they want us to see, consume, and interact with certain content. That changes when we own and run Web 3. Well, at least that's the hope. I hope this helped just a little bit. Let me know what your predictions are in the comment section below. As always, stay safe, get rich, and we will see you soon.